non-theists. I am the Atheist Paladin. Um, originally, when I started my channel, I wanted to talk about, you know, creation and evolution, but I really never got in that too much. But this time, I'm, this video is actually going to be about that. I'm going to talk about why the design argument ultimately fails. There are several fatal flaws, multiple fatal flaws, that make it pretty much uh, the uh, the design argument pretty much useless. The first objection that I will bring to it is that our hyperactive pattern recognition. Um, we sometimes tend to see patterns when none actually exist. That's why we see, you know, bunny rabbits and people and cars in the clouds. That's why we see those sort of things. It's the same with the ink block tests. You know, we sort of see sort of things, but they're not really there. And that's why um, we can't really trust our intuition per se when detecting design, supposedly. This brings me to the second point, the ones that say that design can be detected through irreducible complexity uh, hasn't really succeeded since um, there are now numerous cases where evolution has been shown to uh, actually accomplish irreducible complexity by itself. So evolution is not helping us now that in fact we, it have helped us evolve a hyperactive uh, detection system which really helped us against predators, but it doesn't really help us against false positives. And now it, it is involving what we call the appearance of design. If we look at a bacteria that eats PCP, pentyl chloro fentanyl, or phenol, I believe, it involves three main enzymes. All three enzymes are required to eat this deadly chemical. And yet we have bacteria that have pretty much evolved this ability which does not appear. Therefore it meets the standards of irreducible complexity. So there, um, therefore the, uh, the argument while well, it must be designed because it's irreducibly complex pretty much falls flat on its face. The third objection I would like to say is that um, it's really just post hoc. You can't merely make uh, predictions with design. As a result, uh, anything that you say is suboptimal or poorly designed is exp mostly explained away by theology and not by predictions. You know, oh, that's because sin into the world, or, you know, God works in mysterious ways. But we all know when we design something, when humans at least design something with a purpose, they normally try to accomplish it in the most optimal way. They normally don't try to be inefficient. And so that really blows that um, objection out of water because it's post hoc and it doesn't really um, show uh, a creative behind it because it's not always at its optimum performance. Or, uh, performance can be arguably better, but it just simply works, but not all the time. Fourth objection I'd like to say about it is that when dealing with these sort of design arguments, you see a painting, and therefore there's a painter. If you see a designer, therefore there's a design. And a lot of these arguments actually use a comparison. They use something that's normally not nature, like that something that we know for a fact is designed and then they compare it to nature. He said, oh we don't see this you know naturally occurring and yet creationists are the ones that are claiming that the whole of existence is created. That means the rocks, that means uh, for that have no apparent design, that means the trees, that means everything. So what do we have we compare this to? Nothing! We have nothing to compare this to. The fact that, that they're using an argument for a, a building, well, we don't see buildings rising up out of the dirt out of the earth, so why do we say the earth itself is created? There, there is no comparison. It, it, is, it pretty much assumes what it's trying to prove. Secondly, it's using something that we know um, is uh, designed is there anything that they can bring 
as an example that we have not known that was designed, but now it can prove it. Not in the slightest. So we have something that is pretty much um, pretty much assumes the argument. The fifth objection is, well, it just could have not formed by chance. But again, this is really post hoc. Uh, there's a billion ways it could have gone, and assuming after the fact that, uh, that this happened, well, it must have been a bill by design. We have no reason to assume that it could have gone any other way, or it has gone any other way. So uh, that pretty much leaves the design argument to have nothing to go on except by faith itself. Um, there are chance doesn't. Um, Chance isn't really a good counter-argument because evolution itself is not chance, it is a process. It is a process of more than one thing coming together and developing a pattern. And so the design argument sort of tries to straw man, well those couldn't come by, you know, chance. Well, I'm not saying it came by chance, I'm saying it came by certain natural processes which is completely different. The natural processes have certain orders and they uh, regulate themselves in certain ways. So that, that that's pretty much my argument against design because there really is no other reason to believe in it because it takes faith. You will say the universe is designed well based on what? What are we comparing this to? And saying the whole of existence, uh, all we know of, is design, and you have nothing to compare it to. It is just a uh, bleep of faith, basically. The best you can do is, is I don't know, or it may be coming about certain processes. But to say it's design posits a designer that is uh, even more complex. It posits something that in and of itself is more complex in what you're trying to explain, and that's just simply irrational. So remember, rationality is the path to righteousness.